Hey friends. Hey, 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 hey. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Uh, okay. Happy Wednesday. Uh, y'all got anything fun planned for the weekend? Hey, say hi. Who's watching me? Hey, Jessica. How you doing, doll? Happy Wednesday. Crafty. What's going on with you, gorgeous? Okay, and next one is black women. There we go. All right, so we are all shared out. Thanks. We're all shared out on Facebook. Let's get to Instagram. So now we're taking it to the West Coast, y'all. What's my fave word? <laughs> I'm not saying that on here because my mother watches. <laughs> all right. You said you live in the dream. Hey, girl, you know, I'm here. Hey, Margaret, I I don't have to worry about where I'm sleeping or what I'm going to eat. You know, my car's working. My dog loves me. Life is good. <laughs> Favorite word. Okay. All right. Is this pins? Okay. All right. So we're all shared out. <laughs> we're all shared out on Instagram and Facebook. Um, we are getting started in just a few minutes. Um, okay. So tonight our story. Oh, I got to turn on the recording device. Tonight we're talking about two short. Two shorts in the news for some, for some uh, copyright infringement. Uh, our favorite family to talk about is making an appearance tonight. Um, Pepsi is in a fight with Mexico. And uh, emojis. Did y'all know that emojis are copyrighted? I didn't know that. Or trademarked, I should say. Excuse me. But uh, yeah, there's a whole big thing happening about that as well. So we're going to be talking about all that this evening as well. We're going to go over our NPL nugget of the night. As y'all know, we're covering Dunn's numbers this month. Um, you didn't know? Girl, I just found out today. Who? Yes. So I'm very excited to share these stories with you. Uh, remember at 805, I need y'all to share this out to your people. Ooh, it's 805 already? My goodness. Okay. Whew. Falling behind y'all. Hold on, let me let me get myself together. Uh, okay, Usher, you got to go on mute right now because I don't need any copyright claims on my vidges. All right, all right, let's get started. I had to record. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome to NPL Legal Dish. This is my Monday through Wednesday live broadcast where I teach business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. If this is your first time seeing my face or hearing my voice and you're like, who's this lady? I'm Natalie Pierre Lewis. I'm the host of the show and I'm the owner and operator of NPL Consulting LLC, a business formation firm. Hey, Cheryl. What that means is I help people like yourself get your business paperwork together. So things like getting your articles of incorporation, uh, making sure you have your EIN numbers and DUNS numbers, contract templates for clients and partners, brand protection strategies, and hiring and training strategies so you don't get sued for discrimination. I help you do all of these foundational things so that your business can be legitimate and you can do things like, you know, establish yourself so you can access business credit and business loans and grants and all those wonderful things that legitimate businesses can get to. All right. If you're wondering why I'm qualified to help you do all of those things, I am a licensed attorney, have been one for 15 years and counting. 
I've started multiple businesses for myself and others, both online and offline. I've had many careers in the realms of entrepreneurship, the law, education, hospitality, and administrative support. And most important, I am very passionate about making business and legal education as accessible to everybody as possible. Uh, not everybody has the time, the money, or the desire to go to business school or to law school, but a lot of you have amazing business ideas. And if you're going to be successful, there are just some things you need to know. So that is why I'm here to help you uh, through that process. So if you're in the startup phase of your business or you've been in business for a while and you need some structure or you just have a business idea and you don't know where to start, I want you to get in contact with me. How are you going to go? How, blah, how are you going to do that? You're going to go to linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm, linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm, linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm. There you're going to be able to book yourself a free 15 minute consultation. If you are a first time client, you will also be able to download my free biz launch cheat sheet that will help you choose and start your dream business in seven days or less as well at linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm. You can access many of my video trainings and eBooks, <clears throat> excuse me like our Duns number workshop that we are, um, that we're focusing on this month. Uh, and you can also get your show merch. You can get your mugs, you can get your t-shirts. So, you know, while you're listening to these stories and you listen to me cackle on, on online, you know, you can sip your tea with your legal tea. <laughs> I'm being silly, but yeah, there's a lot happening at NPL, uh, at Linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm. It's also where you can uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hey, Nessie time and to the podcast so that uh, you can, if you ever miss a live broadcast, you can catch up at your leisure. All right. So there's a lot happening at Linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm, but that is enough about that. Let's get on to the show and why we're here for those of you who might be new. Here's how the show works. So we start off with our NPL nugget of the night, which is a, a piece of business or legal um, knowledge that I want to impart to you. And I do that in a couple of minutes. Uh, then we move on to our stories. Now you might say stories where you get these stories. I get them from everywhere. I get them from you guys. You guys be up in my DM sending me some wonderful stories. As a matter of fact, our first story tonight was provided to us by 76 Grim K. Uh, I get them. I have Google alerts set up. I find them on, you know, blog sites everywhere. Any, anywhere I find a story that has a business lesson that we can learn, I pull them together and we discuss them. So this is the time for you to get involved. Don't be shy. I want your questions. I want your comments. Okay. Um, as long as they're respectful and I will be asking you some questions and asking you to put things in the comment box. So keep your fingers ready unless you drive and keep your hands at 10 and two, please. All right. We don't want no accidents. It's already been, you know, it's been a rough year and two months. <laughs> All right. But let's uh, let's get to it. All right. So we are starting off with our NPL nugget of the evening. Now, like I have said it already twice today, we are focusing on Dunn's numbers this month. All right. Now, if you weren't here Monday or Tuesday, Monday, we talked about what uh, <laughs> we talked about what um, a Dunn's number is. We said that it is an identification number that is issued to you by Dunn and Bradstreet. It is how uh, your business's financial transactions are tracked all over the world, all right? Um, and then yesterday, I believe our NPL nugget... I forget. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm drawing a blank right now. Anyway, um, our, our NPL nugget for tonight uh, is that... There are Dunn's numbers. You need them for many different reasons. One of the first reasons you need them. Oh yeah. Now I remember last night's, um, NPL nugget was that you need a Dunn's number to start establishing business credit because it's like, you know, when, when you're applying for a credit card, right, they ask you for your social security number. It's the same thing. When your business wants a credit card, they're going to ask you for your Dunn's number. Okay. So they can see your history. Um, another thing that you need a Dunn's number for what we are covering tonight is you need a Dunn's number. If you want to be an iOS developer. Um, so, if you want if you want an app uh, you know in the Apple iOS space you have to have a Duns number you can't just put your your apps on there just like um you know if you want so if you are ever interested you know most um pretty much everybody has an app sometimes I'd be like what do we need an app for this for anyway but uh you know most most apps you want to get onto the iOS space because that's where a lot of people get their apps from well if you want to be a, you know if you want Apple to take your app, you have to have a Dunn's number. All right. So that's just your tidbit for the evening. If you want to have an app in the Apple iOS app store, you need 
a Dunn's number. Now, if you don't have a Dunn's number, you don't un- and you don't know the other reasons why you need a Dunn's number, you don't know where to get one, you want somebody to show you how to apply for one, go to Linktree forward slash NPL Consulting from the first button is where you can get my Dunn's number workshop where I take you through the whole history and I take you to the website and you know, you get the whole kit and caboodle. All right. So that is done. All right, we're moving to our stories, the favorite part of the show. Okay, y'all, I need, is is anybody here watching from the West Coast? I know Nessie Time is on the West Coast. Nessie Time, are you a Too Short fan? What's my favorite word? Uh, 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 like short. Uh. Ness, do we have any other West Coast people or any Too Short fans? If you are a Too Short fan... Um, give me a dollar sign emoji. If you're a too short fan, give me a dollar sign emoji. Okay. You're a too short fan. Okay. Nessie is a too short fan. What's my face for? Mm. Oh, sorry. Uh, I got lost. <laughs> All right. Now, as we know, too short has been giving us bops for like over 20 years. All right. And he's still to this day making music. All right. Um, and does anybody know, well, sorry, has anybody heard Two Short's latest release? Has anybody heard Two Short's latest release? Let me know. Nessie Tom, you're in the West Coast, so I'm sure they're playing Two Short's music all day long. Have you heard Two Short's latest song and do you know the title? Okay. What's my favorite word? Uh, 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 uh. While Nessie gives us that, sorry, oh, Nessie Time hasn't heard it. All right, well, if you didn't know, Too Short recently came out with a new song called Ain't Gonna Do It. And it, you've you've been to Bust? What, is that, what does that mean? What's Bust? Um... Oh, you, oh, you've been too busy. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, Too Short came out with a song called Ain't Gonna Do It. Um, it features E-40. Do we have any E-40 fans watching right now? Hey, Chef Aru. Um, and the song Ain't Gonna Do It, you know, like most songs, Too Short came out with the video, right? And in the video, Too Short and E-40 they are dressed in some very familiar uniforms. They're dressed in these brown uniforms that have the initials UPS on them, and UPS stands for United Pimp and Services, okay? So basically, (laughs) Too Short and E-40 took UPS uniforms and changed it from United Parcel Service or Postal Service to, to, to United Pimp and Service. And UPS is... Yes. And UPS is not too happy about this. Um, UPS actually had two shorts video removed from the internet because of copyright infringement. Um, there's, you know, and using their marks, uh, UPS said, we don't want any parts of this two short and E40 song. UPS does not condone pimping or, you know, the, the trafficking of women. We are not here for the gangster rap. <laughs> Nessie Times said, stop it, girl. I would be angry. Girl, look, Go look up Ain't Gonna Do It. Go see if you can find a clip of the video, okay? Margaret Massey said, what were they thinking? Jessica Lynn is laughing her head off. Either way, Too Short and E-40, they tried to come out with this video, and UPS said, no, girl, take it down. We do not approve. Now, who can tell me? Uh, Jessica Lynn said, oh, well, bullies. (laughs) Now, who can tell me? Why does UPS not want to be associated with with this song by Too Short and E-40. Why would UPS not want this kind of free publicity, um, you know, for 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 UPS? You know, wh- why wouldn't they want Too Short to blow them up? Because remember when Nelly came out with Air Force Ones or um, Busta Rhymes came out with Pass the Cavassier? How come UPS don't want Too Short and, and, and E-40 to, to have this song Ain't Gonna Do It and, you know, use the UPS uniforms for United Pimp and Services. Um, <clears throat> Cheryl Whiteside said their reputation. What about their reputation, Cheryl? Chef Aru said, you're not you. But they but they pimp the, sh- they pimp the ish out of you for your labor. They do. They do. Uh, I, yeah, that UPS does work their, their drivers pretty hard. 
Um, Sincere 39 said he likes the song. Have you heard the song, Sincere? I have not heard it yet. But who can tell me? So Cheryl said UPS doesn't want to be associated with Too Short because of reputation. What do you mean by that, Cheryl? Expound upon that because I like where you're going with this. Hello, Miss Whitney. Um, uh, Chef Aru said because they were exposing them. Exposing them how? What do you mean? Margaret Massey said, everybody knows UPS is the delivery truck. Sincere, you saw the video too? All right. <clears throat> yes, everybody knows UPS is the delivery truck. But why doesn't UPS want Too Short and E-40 to use this uniform for their United Pimp and Services, you know, uh, parody for their video? Um Jessica Lynn said UPS will literally have to come for every artist who has used their uniforms. It's not that they're using their uniforms. It's what it's what they're making it stand for. Right. Because I was I think I was is Drake does Drake dress as a UPS driver in one of his videos. I feel like he does. Anyway, Too Short and E40 are calling it United Pimpin' Services. UPS does not want to be associated with tr with sexual trafficking or pimping in any form or fashion. So yeah, they're going to come after Too Short and E40, okay? Chef Aru said, I know a lot of people they, that work there and they said it's like slavery to them. Okay. Uh, so, hey, 76 Grand Grand, we are, we're, um... We're talking about too short right now. Um, Margaret Massey said, bad association spoils useful habits. Yes, with the uh, proverbs. Cheryl Whiteside said, the wording, the lyrics, probably. Um, Jessica Lynn said, there are other companies with the initials UPS. It's not just the initials, though, right? It's the initials. It's the, it's the uniform design. It's everything. It gave the appearance of UPS. Hello, helpful digital marketer. All right. Okay, so yeah, so basically UPS does not want to be associated, uh, <laughs> Miss Whitney said yes with the scripture, uh, yeah, but UPS does not want to be associated with United Pimpin' Services, right? Yes, you might have some people who, who put, who, who kind of, you know, make their own UPS uniforms for whatever artful purpose, but they're not using it to promote this fiction, this fictional pimping services and as a you know a company that works worldwide and you know com and touches all communities ups needs to keep their nose clean so no they're not going to allow you to have your song out here talking about pimping girls with the ups uniform on um jessica lynn said then stop pimping the workers look that is another day i'm sure there is an em employment or labor attorney out there who is you know Digi diligently working about improving working conditions at UPS. But what we are talking about today is the copyright and infringement that UPS has filed against Too Short and E40 and got the whole video for Ain't Gonna Do It taken down. Okay. All right. So that long story short, be careful how you're using people's stuff, even when it's parodied. Okay. All right. Next story of the evening. Y'all. They have done it again. They've made it on here again. We are talking about this. Apparently, uh, Chef Aru said, what's the song called? The song is called Ain't Gonna Do It. And it's uh, too short featuring E-40, Chef Aru. Okay. All right. Um, okay, guys. Next story stars, you know, th th this show's quote unquote favorite family. What family are we always talking about on this show? Let's see who is an OG in the viewer department. What family consistently makes appearances on NPL Legal Dish? Can y'all tell me? Can you tell me? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me right now? Oh, yes, since it's 39. Yes, the car dash ends and they are here again tonight welcome kim Courtney. No, i'm just kidding um <laughs> we know that the kardashian family not you yes margaret the kardashians yes okay so all right yes i, lo I love this i got tons of kardashians not you uh hey jada all right so yes so the kardashians we know that they are they put their name on everything they got makeup they got clothes, they got um, what, whatever, shoes, 
whatever you think about the Kardashians are willing to put their name on. Uh, Kris Jenner's coming out with her own makeup line. I feel like they have a, do they have a cookware line? I don't know. Anyway, the Kardashians have not stopped. Uh, how many of you would be interested in Kardashian greeting cards? Like if somebody gave you a birthday or a Christmas card and it had, it had the Kardashians on the front of it, how many of y'all would, would like that? Um, because apparently Kardashian greeting cards are going to be coming near you. The Kardashians have filed a trademark for the phrase Kardashian cards, cards with a K, um, and it is for, Nessie Time said nope. Uh, it's going to cover, hey hun, it's going to cover calendars, decals, photos, albums, pictures, posters, postcards, scrapbooks, stationery, paper, notebooks, stickers, transfers, writing utensils, erasers, bookmarks, and gift wrap. Um, 76 Grim K said, oh, no, no, no. Since the other night said, I will stick with Hallmark. Jada said, I'm not at all interested. Uh, Margaret Massey gave me a thumbs down. Cheryl said, absolutely not. Y'all do not like the Kardashians. Look, I ain't a fan, but I will say that this is a family that knows how to make money. All right. They know how, they know how to work that intellectual property game and they are getting into the paper game. So you're probably going to see some greeting cards with, you know, Kim on there, maybe some with North. You know what? I would be interested in greeting cards with their kids on them because their kids are so cute. Give me one with North Saint, uh, was it, uh, pa Saint North Saint Psalm and Chicago. I'll take those or, you know, the other kids. But I'm not interested in paper goods with the Kardashians on them. Uh, Sincere39 said Super Hustlers for sure. Absolutely. You know, they just ended their contract on E and they're going to Hulu so they can get more control over their show and keep more of the money. So, you know, whether whether we love them or hate them, you know, y'all you, know they're not my favorite family. They know how to make money. All right. They know how to do this intellectual property game right. All right. <clears throat> okay. Before we move on to our next stories of the evening, I want to remind you guys that you are watching NPL Legal Dish. This is my Monday through Wednesday live broadcast where I teach business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. If you are in the startup phase of your business and you would like some legal guidance to help you along this perilous journey of entrepreneurship, I want to help you out. Go to linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm and uh, book yourself a free 15 minute consultation today. All right. Okay, uh, going back to the comments, since the other night said, oh, I thought it was going off for good. Oh, no, no, no. They just ended the contract with E. They are coming back for new seasons, but it's all going to be on Hulu this time, right? You think the Kardashians are going to, are going to give up that money? Are you kidding me? No. All right, moving on. Uh, okay. How many of you have heard of Gatorade? If you've heard of Gatorade, give me a G. Give me a G. If you've heard of Gatorade, give me a G. Um, and everybody should be giving me a G because we've all heard of Gatorade. Okay. Um, if you didn't know, what the, the funny tidbit that I found out was that Gatorade was actually uh, first created at University of Miami. Um, and you know, they're, they're, or University of Florida, University of Florida. And you know, that their, their mascot is the Gator. So that's why they called it Gatorade. All right. G's all around. Awesome. So you've heard of Gatorade, but have you heard of Gator Light? If you've heard of Gator Light, <laughs> if you've heard of Gator Light, um, give me. Yeah, Florida, University of Florida. If you've heard of Gator Light, give me an L. Give me an L if you've heard of Gator Light, okay? Now, um, I if you've heard of it, I would be very surprised. Uh, Pe Pepsi is basically trying to roll out a new product called Gator, Gator Light, right? Um, and it's supposed to be a rehydration drink. You're it's like a powder. You're supposed to be able to put it in your drink, and, you know, it gives you the electrolytes, and you feel better. Um, here's the problem. There is a Mexican company by the name of Laboratorios Pisa, right? They, um, they have their own product, their own rehydration product called Electrolit. 
Electrolit has apparently been around for many, many years, even before, um, you know, Pepsi came out with Gatorade. Uh, it is, it is, it is another, it is another, um, rehydration drink and they are suing Pepsi for trademark infringement and un unjust enrichment and unfair competition because of Gator Light. They are saying that Pepsi not only has blocked Electrolit from being sold in the US, but they also copy the design and formula of Electrolit and then put that product on the shelves themselves. Um, now, I posted a picture of Gator Light and Electrolit in my comments, and I asked you guys if it was too close for comfort. Um, some of you said yes, some of, some of you said no. It's, um, I wouldn't say it was even, but it wasn't like, you know, a big disparity. And when I looked at these pictures, at first I was like, you know, I don't know if these if these labels look that much the same because that's what Electrolyte is saying. They're saying that Pepsi copied their white diagonal banner, the positioning of the name, the circular badge, and the subtitle in the background, right? So I was like, well, I, you know, I'm looking at these. I don't know if they're that the same, but y'all know how my eyes are bad, right? So when I made the picture, I took off my glasses and I put my phone like this and I looked at the bottles and with my fuzzy eyes, those two bottles looked exactly the same, right? So technically there could be a mistake. Someone might mistake Gator Light for Electrolit, but basically Electrolit has filed a trademark infringement case against Pepsi. And because the court's think that there is a credible claim here, Pepsi is not being allowed to roll out with this new Gator Light product. Now, keep in mind, Pepsi has spent about $18 million. Yes, girl, fuzzy eyes. Uh, Pepsi has spent about $18 million formulating this new product. And the judge has said, I know you don't, you just spent $18 million on this girl, but you're going to have to hold, hold off on that until we figure out this whole trademark situation, right? So this is why it's important when I tell, when I tell you guys, don't build your back on somebody else's brand, right? This Mexican company, they're like, look, we've been out here. Pepsi has been copying us. Pepsi, they've tried to keep us out of the U.S. market, but what they don't have is these trademarks. So we're coming after you, Pepsi, for this uh, for this Gator Light. And until the court resolves whether there is an, a credible um, a credible claim of infringement, Pepsi can't come out with this new drink that they just spent $18 million developing. This is why it is important to make sure that your logos are unique. Don't build your brand on someone else's back. Can you imagine investing all of that money into a product, millions of dollars, and you can't come out with it because another company is saying that you copied them? Don't do that to yourself. Be original. You know, like, um, and Pepsi got too much money to be copying other people. Um, but I want to know from you guys, if you saw the bottles, um, in, in my, in, if you saw the, the picture of the drinks in my stories, let me know. Do you think that they, that they look similar? Do you think that it's possible that Pepsi, uh, copy, copied Electrolyte design and formula and things like that? And they're just trying to ride on their coattails. Um, <clears throat> Sincere39 said Pepsi will ride it off. Uh, Jada said, girl, <laughs> what do y'all think? What do y'all think? What do you think? Um, I wouldn't, now while I say Pepsi has too much money for this, I wouldn't put this back past big companies. We're actually going to talk about that in our next case. Um, but you know, again, don't build your brand on someone else's back because you never know when the rug is going to be pulled out from under you. Right. Remember when, uh, night we talked about Nike having that whole campaign about running changes, everything. They spent $20 million on it. And then they found out that they stole the campaign from a small, uh, you know, running store and they had to scrap the entire campaign, $20 million down the drain. Um, Margaret Massey said she would think they were associated in some way. So she thinks the bottles have, have some similarities. Jessica, Jessica said, right, right. Like it's just, just, just be unique. Y'all don't copy other people. Margaret said they looked similar. Yes. <clears throat> I told you my fuzzy eyes. They were like, oh, I think they're the same. Okay.
All right, moving on to our final story of the evening. This story was uh, brought to my attention by the lovely 76 Grimke. Um, she just be on it. Uh, and this is a, a pretty cool story. Um, if you use an emoji, if you use emojis, give me your five top used emojis in the comments right now. If you use, like we all use emojis. Okay. There's my mother uses emojis. Uh, if you use emojis, give me your top five most used emojis in the comments right now. Mm -mm 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 -mm. <laughs> Margaret said I got fuzzy ass too. Yes. Fuzzy eyes unite. Um, but yes, give me, give me your, okay. Zephyrina gave me a heart, the, the surprise face, laughing, a guitar and a painting 76 Grimke. Okay. Uh, okay. I love these. I love these emojis. Okay. All right. Thank you for the emojis. Yes. All right. Did you know that emojis are are owned they, they are owned and trademarked and copyrighted um since if they're not said he would think that was a gatorade product okay thank you for the emojis y'all did you know that emojis are owned by a company in germany there is a company in germany by the name of emoji co and they make pretty much every emoji you see on your phone. So when you get those emojis on your phone from your Galaxy or your iPhone or whatever, they didn't create those. They're licensing those from a German company. Thank you for the emojis, Margaret, right? So, um, and I actually went to the, the company's website. It, if you look up Emojico, it'll come right up. And they, they let you choose emojis by country, by emotion. They have emojis I've never even seen before, right? Um, oh, okay. Those are the emojis you use at the end. Right. But, um, so, so yeah, so this German company, they are the gatekeepers to the emojis, right? So, you know, they're making money, right? I didn't know that till today either. Well, this German company, Emojico, <coughs> they are suing Mattel. If you have ever had a Barbie doll, give me a B in the comments. Okay. Now, you know, Barbie, they're always revamping Barbie, coming out with a new Barbie, da, 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 da. Well, apparently they have recently come out with a Barbie emoji style doll, okay? And it's a doll where, you know, you get clothes and then you can put stickers on her that are different emojis. <clears throat> Thank you for the B. Thank you for the Bs, okay, my Barbie fans. Um... Sincere Their Nine said, even when you used to have to create the, with the, no, not those Sincere Their Nine, like the actual pictures. Okay. Uh, but yes, recently a Barbie has been released where you can, you know, uh, dress your Barbie and design her with these emoji stickers and the emoji company based in Germany, they, um, they're knocking on Mattel's door. Like, um, excuse me, girl, these emojis that you're selling to your audience, those are ours, and you didn't ask permission to include them in your little packet. So where's our money? So uh, Emojico is suing Mattel for trademark infringement because they are using their emojis without permission. Or, I'm sorry, copyright infringement. Hello, Mr. Are you in the Outer Banks? Mr. OXB Brown Sugar. Sincer, uh, since they're nice, I said no Barbies for me. You ain't have a Ken doll. Sincere, Ken. <laughs> yes, but um, I think this is incredible. This German company, they realized, you know, what they had. I did not even know that emojis were protected by intellectual property. So think about this. Think about all the dolls that Mattel sells, all the Barbie dolls, and all the Barbie dolls they're going to sell with this emoji style Barbie. Emoji Co. wants their money. Run them there. Run us our money, sis. You out here using our emojis and you didn't even say boo to us. Um, but yes, um, this is why it's important to do your research. But my question is, Barb, or my thought is, Mattel is a large enough company where you have to be thinking about intellectual property all the time. Why is somebody on your intellectual property team in the in-house council? Why aren't that? Why aren't they abreast of these emoji, you know, intellectual properties, these copyrights, these trademarks? Why aren't you keeping up on that? Or do you think Barbie just said, you know, whatever, you know, we can just do this. Nobody's really going to pay attention. 
How do you think this slipped through the cracks for a company as large as Mattel, a company with as much money as Mattel? Hmm. What do y'all think? <laughs> um. <clears throat> oh, hey, Mary. Um. Yes. What? So, what do you think? Why do you think Mattel? put this doll into production and get, you know, came out with these stickers, these emojis that obviously are protected. And apparently nobody did the research to see that, you know, they're protected. Since either nine said people aren't as smart or something or something. Companies make strange moves nowadays. Nessie time said someone fell asleep at the wheel. It could be, or maybe, maybe people think that, you know, emojis are really generic and nobody owns them. Cause even me, I didn't know that emojis were protected by intellectual property. I thought they were just kind of, you know, uh, what you call that in the public domain. Uh, Mary said it's bullying. You think it's bullying? You think Mattel is trying to bully the emoji company or the emoji company is trying to bully Mattel? Because Mattel hasn't even contacted the emoji company. They just came out with a doll and said, we're selling it. Um, <clears throat> Margaret Massey um, says that they didn't think they were copyrighted. So they may not have thought that the emojis, you know, were anything that were protected and they could just do it. You know, they are they are pretty common. 76 Grimke said they're trying to profit that too. Uh, but... Yeah, so this German company, they're going after Mattel. They want their coin. Um, so that's why it's important for you guys to make sure, even if you think it's super generic, you still need to be looking to make sure that, you know, whatever you're trying to trademark or whatever you're trying to use, make sure it's not protected. Since it and I said, I don't think anyone knew that. I would think emojis were generic. I would too, but apparently they're not. And this German company wants all their coin from uh, Miss Mattel. All right. So, um, yes. So those were the stories that I had for you this evening. Um, we're going to shut, uh, start closing down for the night. But if you guys have a couple of questions about the stories that we covered tonight or our NPL nugget or anything about Dunn's numbers, now is your time to ask. I'm going to give you like two minutes to get your questions in. Um, and, but and while you get your questions in, I'll start to close down. Uh, I want to thank you guys for being here. Did I say hi to my parents and Joey? Hey guys. Um, we will not be here tonight. Remember we only do the show Monday through Wednesday. Make sure that you pick up your Dunn's Number video trainings. Make sure you book your one-on-one -on -one sessions. Uh, we will be back on Monday with more stories. If you find anything you want me to talk about, please send it to my DMs because I love it when you send me stories. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. What else do I need to tell you guys? Mm. Yeah, I think that's all I have. Uh, again, thank you guys for... Hold on. I've got a long comment here. Uh, Zephyrina said, I saw a girl selling Instagram inspired croquet purses, crochet purses, but was asking if you made the pattern, give her credit for it. Wouldn't she have to own the rights to use the Instagram logo as her credit? Hi, Jess, the Southern Belle. Um, thank you, Margaret. Zephyrina, uh, I'm 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 not sure I'm not sure what the question are you sell are you saying that the purse looked like the Instagram logo? Uh, I'm I'm not exactly clear on that. Um, so if you could if you could restate that, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> while Zephyrina restates her question again, I want to thank you guys for your participation, for your energy, for being so funny, for being so engaged. Um, Oh, Zephyrina said yes. So she's so the purse is in the shape of the Instagram logo. Um, yeah, I feel like there might be some issues with that with Instagram because that is a trademarked logo. But I mean, it's just like you know when you're online, it's it's just basically a matter of time before they catch you. So she shouldn't be doing that. But you know, <clears throat> uh, eventually someone's gonna catch up with her. All right. Okay. So that's where I'm gonna leave it. It's okay. It's all right. So that's where I'm going to leave it for tonight. Um, uh, again, we'll be back next week. If you guys do have any other questions that you think of, make sure that you hit me up in my DMs and we can talk. You're Okay, good. I'm glad I could answer that for you. Um, 
yeah. So have a good weekend. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Wear your mask. We are not out of the woods yet. Yes, we have the vaccine here, but we are not out of the woods yet, y'all. Do not, you know, do not uh, put your guard down yet. High impressive. Uh, but yeah, if you missed any of the show, be sure to catch up on the YouTube channel. Go to linktree forward slash NPL Consulting Firm to subscribe to that or subscribe to the podcast so you can listen at your leisure. Hello, Quanta B77. We're about to shut down now. Um, so I will see you Monday. Bye, everybody.